added so much more to Nariva Swam than what meets the eye. The place, the place is Nariva Swam special. It's a home, it's a community, it's, it's a place burning with activity. The river swamp is special because it's the largest freshwater swamp that we have here in Trinidad and Tobago. It occupies a huge chunk of Trinidad by extent, over 11,000 hectares. It's an area where you have six distinctive types of forests. You have it together in one particular place, which is Nariva Swamp. When I get into my boat, I feel like a hero. Because going up the channel alone is so amazing. You know, it's so, you know, you can always see something, so you know you're always looking out for something. Nariva Swamp is not like just come one day and see everything. You are in for a very nice surprise um, in viewing wildlife. You can find blue and gold mako. You can find the red scarlet mako, the West Indian manatee, the red howler monkey, the white fronted capuchin. There is so much wildlife, too much birds and animals. There is so much that we have to offer that tourists want, wishing to see right now. They wish that it could be in an environment like this because of the experience that I have when I bring tourists here. They always ask this question. Do other tourists know about this area? The people of Narva Swam is a resilient type of people. They know how to work hard. They know how to make a living off of the land. They know conservation. I live here in Plamita. I am a farmer. I plant watermelon, cucumber, and maybe some time ago. I'm a farmer for the past 35 to 40, let me say 35 to 40 years. I, I like farming because I, I like to plant the land. I like growing crops. But we just plant here around the clock. When I hold here around, we have fire and we have um, disaster like flood running in the rain time, right? That is a big challenge. But when nature takes its course and, and we have disaster, we just, we just have to face it. One of the biggest threats on this area for, the, for ecotourism and wildlife is poachers and fire. So these are the two, two main things that we have to, in, on, a, on a yearly basis, that we have to face all the time. We have a lot of poachers and we have a lot of bush fires. But the fires don't really catch by themselves. It's because it's, it's because of human activities. The Nerva Swamp is a prohibited area. It's only entry by permit only. We have almost every conservation law protecting the Nerva Swamp from the Wildlife Act, the Forest Act, State Land Act, the Agricultural Fires Act, the EMA Act, but we have a lot of illegal activities taking place in the swamp. Growing up here, the swamp was like different. They, we had more forests. You know, over the years going by, the, the forest just declined in the swamp. The people surrounding the area, really, they protect the area. But then we have people from the outside that's come in and do like, you know, plenty negative things like, you know, cutting, fishing, chopping down, like, you know, good forest and setting fire and all these things. We try to educate the public in terms of reporting offences or reporting illegal activity. Now, this is their backyard. And through education and through the forestry division and this field station being here in Kunahan Village, you know, every year, time in, time out, we try to do activities, we try to host events 
you know, we have wool wetland day, we have wool forestry day, and we hold events here in these communities and the fringe communities or the borderline communities around the river swamp to show them the importance of it. This area changed a lot since we have started the National Restoration Carbon Sequestration Wildlife and Library Project with the EMA Forestry and Green Farm Project. Carbon sequestration really is planting the trees, having the trees growing, trapping all the carbon into the, in the air and filtering the carbon and giving you fresher air. So you're sequestering the carbon, bringing, bringing, mitigating the carbon emission and bringing a fresher air, air into our environment. My hope for this area is planting back some trees in this area, planting back some more forest. When I'm looking at sustainability and I'm looking to have us like having somebody in Plumita or everybody in Plumita to have a sustainable lifestyle, I focus on ecotourism because I know our oil resources are running very low and I know our neighboring countries, places like Costa Rica and even all those Barbados and all those places, they don't have oil but they are rich because of ecotourism. They have, they, they're richer than us because of ecotourism and I realize that we have so much to offer here. We have more than a lot of places to offer. And because of ecotourism, we can diversify in this sense of wildlife called ecotourism and make foreign exchange so everybody can live and survive. They are the ones who have to protect the environment. They are the ones who have to use the environment. They use it for their livelihood, be it for agricultural purposes or whatever purpose they use it for. It's a collaborative effort that we need to do for protecting the greater Nariva Swamp.